The Oleaceae, or olive family, spelled O-L-E-A-C-A. Characteristics, these have um, netted leaf veins because they're dicots. They're worldwide in distribution, although probably more in uh, sort of the Middle East and uh, Eastern Asia areas. Um, they are usually shrubs or trees. The leaves are opposite without stipules. The flowers form a corolla, which is a tube of uh, the petals being uh, fused together to form a tube. They often have um, uh, the sepals uh, below the petals fused uh, together also, which would be a calyx. They're frequently very fragrant. The fruit is a berry or a samara. Uh, samara is all also called winged acanes. Um, and there are some economically important members in this family, olive probably the most, but also um, ashes, as in ash trees, forsythia, jasmine, and lilac. Uh, here's a couple of dem drawings uh, demonstrating the main characters of this family. The biggest thing to look for would be that uh, four-lobed um, corolla, and uh, also uh, if there's uh, a fused, for, um, fused sepals below that uh, four-lobed calyx. And uh, these often have uh, uh, pinnate leaves that are um, opposite. On the left, you can see a drawing of jasmine, and on the right, uh, olive. These are in the Lamiales. We've seen this family before with the Lamiaceae. Uh, about 29 genera and uh, at most 900 species, so not a really large family. There are some interesting relic populations. Obviously, it was more widespread at some uh, point where it, Relic populations would be um, things, you know, on hilltops or isolated spots that um, have the same species, but there's, they're very long distances apart, uh, indicating that at one point the uh, distribution was much more widespread, but um, the bits in the middle have been lost. There we are in Lamiales in the asterid group. Um, notable species. Um, Olive, Olea europea, lilac, privet, jasmine, ash trees, forsythia, and fringe tree, uh, Geonanthus virginicus. Here I came across an interesting painting that uh, Van Gogh, or Van Gogh, painted uh, when he was in um, an insane asylum. Looks a little bit insane-y. Uh, but there were uh, groves of olive trees uh, near where they were, and uh, he was very attracted to those groves. Here is some... Um, uh, beautiful picture of an olive tree. These tend to get uh, very distorted and twisted trunks. They can live for a very long time. There's a few that have been documented as being um, over 2,000 years old, and some are rumored to be even older. They're fairly small trees, um, don't get more than maybe 50 feet tall, native to the um, eastern Mediterranean areas. Uh, been cultivated for thousands of years in those areas uh, as for olive oil and for olives. Um, today, there's over 20 million tons of olives produced worldwide, covering 24 million acres, and uh, with Spain and Italy being the, the leaders in production, but many other countries also um, producing olives and olive oil. There, um, uh, it's been a, um, a popular tree or a notable tree for a long, long time. Uh, many references in the literature, including uh, the Bible and Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. And there even was a sprig in King Tut's tomb when uh, that was opened. They have unfortunately become invasive in Australia, in the areas where they're, um, Australia is similar to uh, the Middle East where uh, they're native. Beautiful member of the family, jasmine. Uh, if you've never smelled jasmine, uh, you've uh, missed something. Uh, interesting flower there. If you look, uh, instead of having uh, four petals, it uh, has eight. The upper um, photograph is of a double a horticultural um, um, oddity that uh, uh, many species have been uh, caused to have their chromosomes duplicate and then often the flowers uh, reflect the effort to make more than normal numbers of petals. And there's about 200 species in the genus, but the uh, uh, one that's often used for horticultural uses is, is Jasminum officinale, and um, that reflects uh, some of its um, uh, abilities uh, in uh, uh, primitive medicines um, that uh, it was used for a bunch of different uh, concoctions at different points in its history. It means gift from God in Arabic. And um, uh, the oils are extracted from the flowers that are used in perfumes and incense uh, and also in medicines. And it's very symbolic in many Middle East and Asian cultures. Uh, they use it in different rituals and women wear it in their hair. Um, it's um, a widely loved plant. 
lilac, a common plant around in the U.S., um, not actually native to the U.S. It's uh, native over also in the Middle East, sort of Greece and the areas above it. Um, it's been cultivated for hundreds of years, um, primarily uh, because of, it has just a lovely scent in the early spring. And it grows in uh, a wider range of environments than uh, jasmine will. Jasmine won't take much uh, cold temperature. Forsythia is another one we commonly see in the Midwest. Uh, the clone down at the, there at the bottom is uh, one plant where um, they uh, adopted the practice of, um, of you know, forcing a branch to the ground and putting a brick or something over it until it rooted and then it then in turn turned into another unit and they kept spreading it that way. There are 11 species in this genus, but the one that we usually see is a hybrid between Forsythia suspensa and Forsythia viridissima. Uh, one of the very first flowers to see in the springtime, uh, well before you see uh, tulips or daffodils or anything like that. For some reason or other, it has a reputation for producing lactose, which is an animal sugar that's, that's not even produced really commonly in animals, uh, generally only found in milk. Um, and uh, once people finally got to looking into it, they found that uh, indeed it does not produce lactose. You can find that in literature all over the place, though. Um, it's also got um, some medicinal properties. It's been used in uh, Chinese herbology um, for millennia. It's uh, one of what they call the 50 fundamental herbs. Privet is another um, pretty, wide, pretty large genus in this um, family. And unfortunately, um, it was widely planted in the U.S. before people realized uh, how truly invasive it can be. It's uh, very uh, prone to spreading. It's difficult to kill. Uh, you can't just cut it down. It comes back with vengeance from the stump. And unfortunately, we have quite a bit right in Des Moines. Um, Greenwood Park and uh, other areas uh, have quite a bit of privet that has um, just leapt out of people's yards that have planted it for a hedge. Uh, it's still available. Even there's different cultivars that are still uh, actively sold and promoted in the U.S. Uh, another um, widely planted tree is the ash trees um, that are native to the U.S. Um, they have um, been uh, selected and, and uh, cultivars identified, and uh, it's one of the more widely planted um, uh, trees in the U.S. Unfortunately, now it's um, under threat to the uh, emerald ash borer that um, has already killed millions of trees in uh, many states. Um, it's spread in a variety of ways, including um, trees that are dead, then people um, cut them down and sell them for firewood, and the ash tree, um, the borer moves with the wood. Um, it's been uh, spread um, quite widely, and uh, there's estimated that 7 billion trees are under threat, whereas if you've heard of the Dutch elm disease, they estimate it killed 20 million trees. So this is um, um, a far larger issue. The wood um, is very strong and used for a lot of things for many years. Um, bows, tool handu handles, especially baseball bats, and uh, oddly enough, uh, Fender Stratocasters. Apparently it has a, um, a good uh, tone that it resonates with. It's been in mythology for many, many years as the uh, uh, Norse world tree, they figure it was an ash tree. It was thought to repel snakes. If you just drew a circle with an ash twig, it would uh, keep snakes away. Uh, the Irish thought the shadow would damage crops. I'm guessing probably the shadow itself, um, as in shade, is going to damage your crops. And um, it has uh, the odd term of called a widowmaker because uh, some branches can fall off it fairly quickly and apparently plonk people on the head. Uh, as I mentioned, ash trees are native to the U.S. Uh, Iowa has uh, three native ashes, uh, white ash, Fraxinus americana, uh, green ash, Fraxinus pennsylvanicum, and uh, black ash, Fra Fraxinus nigrum. The black is more, um, more likely to be found on the east side of the state. Not much toxici toxicity in this family. Privet, uh, yes, it seems um, can uh, cause uh, some intestinal issues. And there's some dermatitis um, caused by all members of the family, but not, um, not like some of the families we've seen that just uh, seem to be sprinkled with poisons. For more information, Wikipedia, University of Hawaii. Um, if you are interested in identifying and distinguishing black, green, and white ash, uh, there's an excellent website um, at the uh, University of Wisconsin. And uh, for some more information on Forsythia, you can see the bottom link there. That concludes the Oleaceae.